كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا لسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is Bukhadi TV We have our brother Abu Uthman Inshallah uh, it's good to see you again, Abu Uthman. It's always good to see you, you know. Um, Abu Uthman, the topic today is Muslim starter kit. Okay? I want to start practicing the deen. I'm new to the deen, to Islam, and I want to start practicing it properly. What should I firstly focus on? Allah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in, wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin. That's a very, very, very good topic, akhi, to be honest. But um, the first thing that a person needs in order for him to start practicing the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, I know many of you are just tired of just listening to just just lectures, 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 and you're saying like, why am I not just moving forward? Why, why don't I have motivation? You know what I mean? People watching Merciful Servant. Yeah, people just watch Merciful Servant, you know what I mean? Just the Nasheed stuff and whatever, you know what? All these things are just, they're no benefit, to be honest with you. There are some benefit, but the benefits that you're going to get are way more, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. So I think that, akhi, the first thing that a person really needs in order for him to start practicing the religion, or, or, or if, in order for her to start practicing the religion, is they gotta change their friends. They have to leave that environment of the bad friends and get and get those good friends so they can get motivated, so they can come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you understand? So, Akhi, I think that's the first thing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the person is upon the religion of their close friend. So watch out who you befriend. You can't befriend every single individual, you know? And subhanAllah, if you really think these people are your real friends, wallahi, they're not. Those people who are calling you to haram, because Allah says in the Quran, Al-Akhillau yawma idhin ba'duhum li ba'din adun illa al muttaqin On that day when the friends are going to be enemies to one another, except those who base their friendship upon piety. So the first thing that you need is to change your friends. If you need to break hearts of your friends just so that you can save yourself, so you can go to Jannah, wallah, you gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? The Prophet wasallam says, whoever leaves something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, Allah Azza wa Jal will give him something better. Allah will give you better friends, trust me. Go to the masjid, find those good friends and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second question, um, I wanna find the correct way of practicing my deen. Yeah. I see different mosques. Uh, they uh, they have a certain way of practicing the religion. One's uh, going to salah with uh, with socks, and another one's going to salah with no socks. What's the proper way to to practice this deen correctly? That's my question. Something very that's a very good question, you know, because I know a lot of the youth are actually confused. You know, um, they, there's so many things that's happening. Someone's telling them, Akhi, come this way. This is the right way. And then another person says, this is the right way. Everybody's calling to different ways. You know what I mean? So what's the correct way? The only way you're going to find out what the correct way is, you have to seek knowledge of your religion. And you have to start off with Aqidah first. Before we even get into socks and all these things, Akhi. Aqidah, is the, the Aqidah itself is, it comes from the root word aqada. It is to tie something firmly. You know, you're tying that thing in your heart. So it's a set of beliefs that you have to believe as a Muslim. And you have to start off with what? Which set of beliefs should you start off with? Who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Once you know who Allah is, then everything else is going to be clear to you, Akhi. Just trust me. Seek knowledge of your aqidah first. Before we get into socks and these other issues, <laughs> let's talk about aqidah first. Once you have your aqidah solidified, then everything else is going to work for, for, you know, for you. Just like what I did, Akhi. I was confused, just like the same thing you're saying right now. Going to the masjid, this one is here, this one is here. Every, every, everyone's confused, you know what I mean? I was also confused too. But I think that once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring me to that student of knowledge who also was teaching me aqidah, everything started working from there, Akhi. So aqidah is the center of everything. So once you start learning your aqidah, everything is going to go. Now, where should I learn my aqidah? Inshallah, we're going to put it in the description box below ta'ala, and everything is going to be set there for you from the students of knowledge who graduated Islamic University in Medina and those other ones who have actually sat with the ulama of our time like Sheikh Fawzan and those other ulama Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best all right um
I see you wearing a nice top, mashallah. Uh, Sometimes I see you wear your kufi, and you know it's, it looks very nice. Um, is that one of the like uh, prerequisites of being on the deen, like practicing practicing the deen properly? Is wearing the thaw, having the kufi, you know, uh, putting the the the, the socks above the ankle, you know, what what is that like one of the the pants be uh, above the ankle? Is that the the way that you know practicing the deen is is? Uh, before this, I was speaking to a brother who's an African American, and he was telling me back in the days when he first accepted Islam, he said that you know everywhere he used to wear kufi and a thob, straight up, regardless of where it is. And he said so much so that he started a cleaning business, and he told all of his workers that you have to wear kufi and a thob. Those Muslim workers. So he's like, we were showing up with our mops and our buckets, kufi and a thob. You know, so subhanallah, he said that's the sunnah of the Prophet. We gotta do it, of course. You know, no doubt, akhi, no doubt, kufi and athob is very important. But I think that, as like some of the ulama, rahimahullah ta'ala, they say, akhi, the sunnah is to wear the clothes of your people, of your land. Sheikh Abdul, I'll give you one quick example. One of the scholars, uh, you know, of this time, uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak al Abbad, one of the uh, uh, one of the scholars of his time, he's also a professor at Islamic University of Medina. Uh, one of our sheikhs was mentioning, he said that when he came to America, uh, he came off the flight, akhi, wearing a kufi, I mean, I mean, wearing a you know a tie and a suit. I'm not saying that a tie and a suit everybody has to wear it, but what I'm saying is this is you know here in the West, tie and a suit is just the general way of doing things. You know, it's the general attire. Uh, but no, you don't have to wear the kufi and a thob. And of course, if you do wear the kufi and a thob, of course, by following the Prophet sallallahu you get that edger uh, ta'ala. So I think that's that's something that's very important. So. Um, uh, I think that everybody should try to wear the kufi and the thawb, you know what I mean? So you can get, you know, ajal and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this beating Allah ta'ala. Alright, last question. Um, now that I have the knowledge, uh, I start wearing like uh, my thawb, you know, practicing the sunnah, I'm firm, now I know what I'm doing. I'm, and now I want to put it into a cause. I want to do activities, I want to help messages, I want to do this. I have so much motivation, I have so much, you know, passion. What should I focus my passion, my motivation, and, and you know, practicing this deen? What, what should I uh, put my focus on? When the guy is young, Akhi, and when the sister is young, you know, one of the things that they have, they won't get later on is, they won't get um, that you know, the memory, as, as, as time goes on, you won't be able to memorize a lot because the memory is going to decrease and whatnot. I think the Qur'an is very important. The Qur'an is very important. The young man, 18, 19, until 26, 27, actually 28, even up to 30, should focus his time on memorizing that Qur'an. Memorizing that Qur'an, learning its meaning, you know, learn the tafsir of the Qur'an. Put time into memorizing that Quran. After Salatul Fajr, the young man and young sister should be one who sits down and memorizes that Quran. I'm not saying it's fard, but I'm saying that we one of the things that being the light Taala is going to get you to be that strong student of knowledge, that going to be that strong individual practicing the Deen of Allah Azza wa Jal is when you start memorizing that Quran. Akhi, I was speaking to one of my sheikhs, a uh, graduate from Islamic University of Medina. I was telling him, us as youth, what should we really focus on? He said 90% of your time, 90% of your time should be focused on memorizing that book, that Quran, memorizing that Quran, learning its meaning. And once you learn its meaning, try to start implementing this. So before you help on the messages and all these things, Akhi, help yourself out first by what? Memorizing that Quran. The Quran is very important, and as well as the Arabic language and whatnot. Try to learn that. ta'ala. Go to your local masjid. So the so the homework for everybody watching right now is go to your local masjid. Go learn the Alif Bata. Go memorize that Quran. Go learn the Tajweed. You know what is Ikhfa, what is Idgham, and all these different things. So start learning that. Bidnillah ta'ala. So I believe those four things that I just mentioned. Number one as being what your friends. Change your friends. And, and then the second step is what? Start seeking knowledge. Once you change your friends, start seeking beneficial knowledge. And the books of Aqidah, that's going to be in the description below. That's two. Number three, try to hold upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. By what? Following the way, the Quran and the Sunnah in accordance to the understanding of the pious predecessors. So hold upon, to, uh, hold upon to that way, which is the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Whether it be the Sunnah of the clothing, but the more important is trying to have that way. Okay, number four is memorize that Quran. 
memorize that Quran, memorize that Quran. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make each and every one of you strong people who are practicing their religion. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make each and every one of you those who get the best in this dunya and the akhirah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant each and every one of you Jannatul Firdaus Al-A'la. I ask each and every one of you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can pump out more beneficial videos to you guys. Make sure you like it and you share it to all your contacts. Barakallah fiikum wa jazakumullahu khair al jaza. Jazakallah khair Abu Uthman. This is Bukhari TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.